Greetings, folks. This is just a quick update on my shop and the grid tie inverters that I modified the cooling on. I now have two cooling mods on my grid tie inverters. Uh, by the way, these are my original solar panels, and I just got these over here. Unfortunately, I ordered six, and I had two destroyed in shipping, and I could not get two replacements because they ran out of them, so I only have four. Oh well. But these are the original ones, and they're doing just fine. And these are feeding the grid tie inverter today. It's a bit cloudy, but hopefully the sun will come out later. Okay, I'm going to head on over to the shop and show you the cooling. And I have one of the grid tie inverters in production here in the shop. The other one is elsewhere. Okay, so here's the grid tie inverter that's in the shop in production. Unfortunately, I'm not getting a lot of action. 78 watts. Okay, so these devices here are the fan controllers for my inverters. There's a total of five fans in this inverter. And the first modification I did was to add the boost, what I call boost fans or auxiliary cooling fans. And that's these black things here. Let me see if I can, you can see right there, there's two fans and those are add-ons. Now those are independent of the grid tie inverter itself and they are boost fans so they're extra cooling and these are independently powered and independently controlled through this fan controller here. This is a modification that I made two videos about previously. This was very successful. I use it on all my inverters now. I have three grid tie inverters. I use it on all of them and it's also fairly cheap to do and I do have to open the inverter but I don't modify the electronics inside. Now this is the new mod, this is another fan controller, and what I did is I took over the fans inside the grid tone inverter itself, and that's also working extremely well. Now I can control those fans, set them to whatever speed I want, and if you have one of these inverters, these inverters are actually, um, the fan control is horrible. So it, it, the fans sputter, they spin up and down, they make weird noises, incredibly aggravating if there's cloud cover especially. So the fans in here will drive you crazy. This was my first solution for that, but later on I had to go ahead and take over the fans in the inverter itself. It turns out that that's very, very good and it works out very well. This fan box is controlled by, I should say it's powered by the grid. So there's a power brick, AC power brick. And this is a grid tie inverter that's plugged into the grid anyway. These fans are powered by a couple of solar panels outside. So they are completely independent, completely independently powered and controlled. In other words, these are redundant fans also. Now with only 90 watts coming in, you're not gonna see the results, but this inverter runs so cool and quiet now. And that is why I do these modifications. Um, the inverter basically, it doesn't make strange sounds anymore. The fans are very consistent you can set them to the speed you want and because of that the inverter runs a lot cooler with the original fan control algorithm the inverter did not run cool it ran too hot now i can keep my inverter around 40 degrees c and i don't have offhand what that is in fahrenheit you'll have to convert it and i can usually get into the 30s so around 35 to 38 degrees celsius which is amazing for a grid tie inverter like that and so now that i have redundant fans it runs very cool, runs very quiet, very pleased with this modification. And if you're interested in knowing how to do this, this is actually incredibly easy to do. Now, I won't say it's easy to get the fans and inverter under control, but to add these fans on is incredibly easy. I made two videos about that and I'll post the links to it. And of course it doesn't really matter what you connect the fans to. I'm using this board because I happen to like this type. And I like the way you can adjust the voltage and steps. So you can just adjust the voltage up or down with a button. And I really like that, and that's why I use it. But you don't have to do this at all. Actually, you could just run the fan straight to a, a power supply and be done with it. And again, these are running off of solar power, so they're completely independent. Backup fans in case something goes wrong with this, or vice versa. There's an extra set of fans running. The solar power equipment board, as I call it, is currently under remodeling. Uh, I did do some new work to it. I've got some new parts coming in the mail, and I'm just slowly picking away at it. There's probably going to be one more grid tie inverter over here on the left. Right here, I'm saving this spot for a grid tie inverter. And if I need to, I can come over here. I added another board. This is an extension. And I have plenty of room here to add my batteries or inverters or whatever I want to put over here. So unfortunately, I have not been able to do a lot of work on this all summer. 
and really for almost a year. And just a quick update about some of the things in the shop. This is an experiment I did a video on recently that should be appearing soon. And yes, that's a cat litter bucket. I have lots of cat litter buckets. I really love cat litter buckets. And they're useful for so many different things. The solar powered HEPA filter, still running strong. Filtering my air off of solar power works really well. Don't really have any complaints with it. I just keep it over here on my workbench and it does its job. Keeps the air clean. And I, for some reason I love anything with a fan motor that lights up and spins. And uh, when you plug a solar panel into it, even more so. This is my Thoron solar generator. This had a display on it that completely failed. It's running really well. I put my own voltmeter in and I disabled the vacuum fluorescent display. I do have a video out on that if you're interested. Uh, this thing was rather expensive and it's a shame they put a VFL in it because they just fail. But it's working fine now and it's running my, some of my overhead lighting. Uh, I've got an inverter. Uh, I've got a light bar plugged in here. And at night this thing keeps my workshop illuminated really well. Gonna need to put a charge in it today because it's getting low. This uh, Make Sky Blue charge controller works okay, especially for the money. However, it does not like a low voltage solar panel, so if it's 17, 18 volts, it will not turn on and charge this battery. It's a shame. So I really need a 24 volt solar panel into this. But uh, I'll be fixing that shortly, hopefully. I installed another power outlet right here. This is uh, to get direct solar power. So this is not a battery, this is just direct solar power. And I'm just slowly getting all these wires into control. Normally I have a lot of wires on my workbench. That has been reduced. And uh, I made this yesterday. And this is for doing uh, experiments with solar panels. It's just a way to connect to it and see what the panel is doing. And over here on my other workbench, I have a rolling workbench. That's what that is there. I've had this for quite a while. It's really just some scrap lumber from my shed I tore down. And kept working on it, kept adding on to it. And... Got these big heavy casters on there. Those are okay. Really nice to be able to roll it around. What I like about this workbench or saw cart, if you want to call it that, because it rolls around, is that you can just move it wherever you want. If something gets in the way or you change your mind, you just roll it somewhere else and lock the wheels. This is my super capacitor experiment that I'm working on. I have a couple of videos out on this. It's not really done, but I'm getting ready to finalize the build. Don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but maybe I'll have a video coming out about that. Also, a friend of mine who I met on YouTube sent me this big box full of recycled lithium-ion batteries. There's all kinds of batteries in here, just massive quantity. And I have a project planned to recycle these and get these in production where they'll be used for solar. And it's actually quite a lot of fun fooling around with these batteries because there's so many different kinds. And you got to be creative and figure out how to attach them all. And this is my recycled tool board or peg board that I got from my shed I tore down. And it's not full, so it's not complete, but I finally am organized. Uh, this is on another level. I didn't used to have this kind of organization capability. And I'm getting everything where it's, I know where it is. And I can do more projects now because I can find my tools. So that's helpful. And finally, you can see the solar powered lighting has been upgraded. Now I have three pretty strong lights running just in that work area over there, not counting other lights that I will be turning on later that don't put out as much light, but I still like to have them. And th those are LED floodlights, and I've never been able to see so well in here. Those are completely powered by solar energy. This whole building is powered by solar and lit by solar. I do have a single grid connection for that grid tie inverter, so I need to have that so I can run my grid tie inverter. Okay, folks, this has just been a quick update about my shop and the grid tie inverter cooling fan mods. Hope you enjoyed this update. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.